People do not choose to be atheist. They realize they are. How's it going, man? You're doing good? I'm doing real good. Jury to whip. Everybody says, oh, how did you lose your faith? I didn't lose my faith. I've lost car keys. I've lost a lot of things, but I didn't lose my faith. I feel like I graduated from the traditions of my family. There's coming a time when every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. From the very beginning, I kind of knew I was going to be a preacher. preacher in our world was the most important person. We are a Christian community. That's one of the things that ties us all together. It's, a, it's, it's, it's love for the Lord. You know, people talk about the Bible Belt. Well, we're the buckle on the Bible Belt. What if your whole world is a cult, a cult of religion? It's not all confined in one house or one compound somewhere, but it's, it's, your, it's your entire town. It's your entire parish. It's in your entire state. You're born in the compound, and there's just a lot of things that you never even think to question unless you start on a journey like I went down. Grace of De Quincey was the very first church that I was the full-time pastor of. In so many ways, it was the happiest years of, of my life. He called our church and our congregation a church family. And that word family is so strong to Christians. I feel like Grace Church grew, I grew as a person. And with him here, our congregation grew as well. There was no particular moment when I stopped believing. This was gradual, it was, it was very progressive. It started off with doctrine, it started off with the Bible. I began to see man's fingerprints all over it from beginning to end. That began to weaken a leg. But as time went on, I began to see that the legs that were weakening was the entire concept of there being a knowable deity. Take the whole 25 years that I was in the ministry and the 42 years that I was in the church culture, there was always one big question that was being asked, is this real? Is this legitimate? And my answer is no. The Lord bless you for coming to Grace today. Those of you I didn't want to leave Christianity. I didn't want to leave the ministry. So I really kept pushing that off. May the Lord bless you and keep you. But by the time that I saw that I was going to quit, watching people get prayed for, for healings, to me felt like someone's fingernails on a chalkboard. He's crossed every boundary to meet you today. As we sing this for him, our leader, Jerry, to just say, guys, I'm sorry, but I, I think that we took a wrong turn somewhere. It was a, very much a betrayal. Dad, it was pretty much a social suicide when he came out to be an atheist, because yeah, everybody started to look down on him and he didn't have as many friends as he thought he did. If he, as a Christian pastor, can be changed so easily, I mean, how close is Satan around everyone? I'm worried about him, and I'm worried about his soul. And I'm worried about the people that, that he talks to, about his, his belief now as an atheist, because the Bible says that if those people are lost, that their blood is on his hands, because he's the one leading them. I almost can't say how honored I am to introduce our uh, first speaker today. He has the, the bravery to come out and live in alignment with the truth and suffered consequences that most of us would not have the gumption to bear. Jerry. I received a notice of foreclosure for our little home. Just a few weeks later, my wife would leave. As you already know, I had moved out of the ministry. I would lost my secular job. It seemed as if the situation was as hard 
as life had ever been. And as soon as I heard him talk, I just started crying because he came out of the same Pentecostal apostolic church and the rejection that he had experienced so just rang so deep. When you come out, it's scary. We don't possess any divine help, but the good news is we don't need it. You don't need it. You already possess the power of relationship. I want to make sure that the next generation lives in a world to where they're very comfortable expressing their individuality. And if we can do that here, then people can do it anywhere. We're trying to have meetings, we're trying to form organizations, we're trying to get a message out until the meetings and the organizations and the messages aren't necessary anymore. We're following in this very long and beautiful tradition of people fighting for their rights. For 28 years, I was the only atheist I knew living here. It wasn't until probably about six months ago that I met another one. Yeah. You know, we just want people to carve a place out for my daughter without feeling like she's going to be ostracized. I can't even tell you, there are countless amounts of people come from very religious households where it is not okay to be who you are. I think that's what this setting is about. It's about just loving people. When people um, come to me and ask, well, did Jerry convert you? I can't help but laugh because his entire message is just love. He takes all the walls down and says, hey, we can all sit in one room and love each other and have a successful progressive conversation. My worldview has got larger and it's got more inclusive. I have told thousands upon thousands of people that this life is nothing but a dress rehearsal and that what they need to be concentrating on is the next life. And I don't believe that to be true anymore. And I'm willing to spend the next 42 years to try to encourage people to enjoy the life that they have.